Today in the news, Samsung is in hot water and we got some Qualcomm tidbits. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Excuse the gamepad, I lost my remote for my teleprompter. <laughs> Let's get started with Samsung. You know, over the years, Samsung really built a great reputation when it came to solid state storage. Their Evo and Pro lineup were definitely top tier. I remember I was super excited when I got my first NVMe drive. It was a 970 Evo, a super popular model, and five years later, it's still going strong. Other brands now are also really solid contenders, but there isn't really one with Samsung's pedigree. Now though, things might change. The company recently released their 990 Pro NVMe drive, and it's still a PCIe Gen 4 drive, but it's blazing fast, almost maxing out the Gen 4 standard. I believe it does 7,450 megabytes per second in uh, reads and 6.9 gigabytes per second in writes. I could have just put them both in gigabytes. Anyways, thanks to a better controller and newer firmware optimized for direct storage, this drive should be a beast in all categories. Tweakdown even gave it a 9 99% rating. It's a great drive. So why do I say that things might change? Well, reports are coming left and right that this drive is basically killing itself. One of the first reports was from Midian over on the overclock.net forum. About a month after he bought his drive, he noticed that the health of the drive had already dropped down to 93%. Ouch. Could it be that he just abused his drive? Well, not really. Crystal Disk Info shows that he only wrote about seven terabytes worth of data. And if you do the math, given the 990 Pro's, uh, I think it's rated to 1200 terabytes written, that means that he should be at 84 terabytes written to get to that 7% of usage. So maybe he got a bad drive. Well, if we jump over to Reddit, Robbie Khan posted that his 990 Pro also dropped significantly in health. Thanks to those two posts, this information was spread a little more widely. And thanks to that attention, more and more owners of Samsung 990 Pros flocked to the Reddit and overclock.net to share their story with the same problem. So it really doesn't seem like a one-off. Robbie even RMA'd his drive back to Samsung, but Samsung just sent it back and told him that no, everything's fine. Clearly, it's not fine. There seems to be a problem when your drive reports 10% of its life going away in a month. Robbie was obviously pissed with that and returned the item back to the store. They definitely lost a customer here and it definitely won't be the last. Samsung really needs to respond here. In the best case scenario, this is just a reporting issue. For example, a software like Crystal Disk Mark doesn't collect or interpret the data correctly because the firmware on the drive is too new or something. That's one example. Problem with this theory is that, well, Samsung's own software, I think it's called Magician Software, well, that one still shows the same degradation on the 990 Pros. In fact, that software, even if it is from Samsung, seems to have issues with the 990 Pros. Anyways, this is a developing story, so I'll keep you in the loop, but let me know if you have one of those drives and if yours seems to be healthy. Personally, it looks like I might avoid the 990, at least until Samsung responds. Then we have Qualcomm with a pretty interesting leak on their upcoming Snapdragon CPU. Kuba Wuj... Nah, I can't do that. Anyways, that Twitter user leaked a whole lot of information on the 8CX Gen 4 CPU. It's a, a CPU that's meant for the desktop market. It's sort of an Apple M competitor, but of course meant to run either Linux or Windows on ARM. It's a 12 core CPU with eight P cores and four E cores. The cache configuration reminds me of Ryzen CPUs. It supports LPDDR5X memory and it has integrated graphics, but it's designed to also work with a discrete GPU over its eight lanes of PCIe Gen 4. You should check out the Twitter thread. It's full of info on this chip. I brought this up just because I just realized that the uh, major x86-64 patent that scares companies away from uh, you know emulating the x86 architecture, well, it's gonna expire in three years. 2026 to be precise. It's gonna be super interesting to see how ARM and RISC CPUs developed for Windows are going to evolve in the near future. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here. To see the latest video, right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.